Hello everybody. Thank you for being here. Today I want to talk about the ugly truth about the skeletons in my closet. I've shared some of my story with a lot of you and going back to the ugly truth series that I've been doing uh, sporadically here on YouTube. And today I want to share with you the cycles of abuse and the cycles of abuse that I continued going through my life until I went through my awakening and then realized that the cycles that I was caught up in were not my own. They were projected on me and taught to me. And therefore, I continued those cycles until I realized that I didn't have to and that's not what love was. When I was a little girl, I was put up for adoption at four months old. And at two years old, I was finally adopted by a family that took me in to be a play toy for my sister. And that's where the abuse began. I was beaten emotionally, mentally, physically beaten, never loved, always in survival mode from the time I was a baby, having to protect myself because I didn't have anybody else to protect me. My mom screamed, she yelled, she beat us at every turn she could, and she didn't care because we were hers and we weren't going anywhere. It was chaos, and so we were always in survival mode. We never knew what we, what we were going to do next that was going to trigger our mother. And our dad stuck up for us one time and one time only. And when he did, he was met with my mother's sword. She screamed, she yelled, and from that point forward, my, na my dad never saved us. He kept to himself, he put his head down, and he just went to work, leaving us with a complete tyrant. So for many, many years, we dealt with her beating us with a board, beating us with whatever she could get her hands on, until finally one day, I had had enough and I moved out and I got pregnant. I was wanting somebody who was gonna love me unconditionally because I never really truly knew what love was. I thought love was chaos. Love was survival. Love was abuse. Because that's the only way I ever got any. So I had a child, very, very young, got pregnant at 15, had her at 16, and I continued that cycle. You know, we always say that we're not going to be like our parents, but there's always a side of us that is exactly like them because we don't know any better because that's all we've been taught. So, of course, what did I do? I screamed, I yelled, I spanked, and I went above and beyond what I should have ever done because, again, that's all I ever knew. Married their father, and the abuse continued. We screamed, we yelled, throwing things. There was so much abuse, so much chaos. And it trickled down to two more children. And then I left because I couldn't handle it anymore because I realized that there has to be something, something more to this love thing that I'm just not getting, that I'm just not understanding. I was 24 years old with three babies in car seats. Didn't know how I was gonna put a roof over their head or food on the table, but I decided to go off on the journey. So, I did. And somehow, some way, I always made it, but I was always in survival mode. You know, at first, when we divorced, it was very amicable. You know, we walked out of the courthouse holding hands. And then he met someone. And they wanted to replace me as their mother. And after everything that I had been through with my own birth mother, of her not being there, and me being so confused my entire life as to why I wasn't chosen, why didn't I get to stay with my mommy and daddy? that I wanted so bad to be there for my kids and give them something that I never had. 
And unfortunately, having a mother and a father under the same roof just wasn't going to work. When I said till death do us part, I actually meant it. But that wasn't, it, it, you know, that wasn't me deciding that abuse was going to be okay in that. And after realizing, I just couldn't do it anymore. So I left him out of love, not out of hate. Because every time I tried to leave him out of anger and hatred, it always wore off. And then I felt guilty. And then I blamed myself. And so I went back. And it became a pattern of going back. Because that's the pattern I knew. So when he met this woman, one day, I ended up with a lady at my front porch serving me with custody papers that they were taking custody from me. And they had a lot of money backing them and I had none. All I had was enough to barely put food on the table for me and my girls. And I fought and I fought hard. And every single time I was able to get some type of a cushion, it was tore right out from underneath me like a rug. And so again, I would go into a panic and a frenzy. And of course, who did I take it out on? The kids. Because I'm scrambling. And every time they went to their father's house, they would fill them full of just garbage about who I am and what I am and make them question and believe things that I just wasn't who I was. And it was a constant beating down of character until finally it got to a point where I was just like, I can't even continue to defend myself every single weekend. And it would take me a good portion of the week to try and just get them back to the same kids they were when they went to their father's house. Because he couldn't control me, he controlled me through the kids and the kids were collateral damage. So one day he finally took my oldest. Eight years old, they went over to their dad's for uh, Easter. And when they returned, I was one child less. And I was devastated, heartbroken, abandoned again. From four months old, that's all I ever knew was abandonment. And the only way to hurt me was to use my children to do so. It was control. And again, unfortunately, they were the collateral damage. Still to this day, they're still collateral damage. They may be in their 20s now, but it has not gone away. I'm still trying to clean up the pieces and the lies that were told about me that were made to be truth. And the reason being is because I got tired and I couldn't defend myself anymore. So instead, I stopped listening. So because I wasn't defending myself, it became true. So it was true if I defended myself and it was true if I didn't defend myself. So either way, I was beating my head against a wall. So as we continued through our lives, I started living in places where I was paying to be abused and then going to work and getting paid to be abused by my bosses. So it's this consistent cycle that I was in and there was no way out until I started drinking and then ultimately doing drugs to just numb myself. And of course, then when that wore off, the anger set in, the frustration set in, more court cases set in. And no matter how much proof I had, our court system, which is so corrupt, as many of you know, who have been in these shoes, and even though I had proof of everything that was going on, and he wouldn't show up after dragging me through the mud and dragging me into court, the court still never did anything, even though it was mental and emotional abuse. But the thing is, <laughs> that's hard to prove because there's no bruises. But the internal scars and the mental manipulation wasn't enough. 
So I was court ordered to do all these things. I was court ordered to take my kids to counseling. I was court ordered and then CPS showing up at my door every time I turn around until finally CPS wrote me a letter stating that if I let them go to their dad's house anymore, I will be held just as accountable as if I was the one who was abusing my children. So when I took that letter to the courthouse from Child Protective Services, their own government officials, it did me no good. The court still denied me. And so what did I have to do? Continue to send my kids to their father's house. Again, another failure. So years go by of brainwashing and years go by until finally one day, he just disappeared. For five years, he disappeared. And in that five years, I went through a major downward spiral. I lost my dad at that time. I was hospice for him working four jobs at the same time. And then as soon as the day after he passed away, I had no time to grieve. I had to literally just pick my up, pick myself up by my bootstraps and get my butt back to work. So there was no time to heal, no time to heal from my childhood, no time to heal from my marriage, no time to heal from any, any of what I had ever experienced because nobody tells you that. They tell you to go to go to school. They tell you to graduate. They tell you to go out and get a job. They tell you to get married. They tell you to have a family. But not one person ever says, take a minute. Heal. You've been through a lot. Because if you don't take that time out to heal, then it's going to come crashing down on you at speeds that you can't even keep up with. And you are gonna hit a rock bottom that there's no coming back from and there's not even cobwebs to clean up. You gotta rebuild. And I know many of you have had to go through the same th thing, especially if you're at my age or older. So I screamed and I yelled. And I said things and I did things that I am absolutely not fucking proud of. Not by any means. Until finally I broke. Everybody always came to me with their stuff and it was easy for me to focus on everybody else's problems than to focus on my own and focus on my own healing and focus on my own abuse and focus on my own patterns and focus on my own shit. What I didn't get what I didn't learn. And I created a catastrophe with my own family, with the people that I thought cared about me. But it was all a false sense of security and all I needed was for somebody to hold my hand and tell me, you know what, Peace, you need to go out and heal. You need to take some time off. But after my dad died, it was right back to work. You don't have time to heal. That's how society pushes us. And what does it do? It pushes us into mental health crises. It pushes us into drugs. It pushes us into alcoholism. It pushes us into escapism. Escape the reality because it hurts too much to face. And that's what I did. Until one day, I couldn't do it anymore. I started seeing things that... I didn't even know could be a part of reality, but it was. I almost died. I wanted to commit suicide because I couldn't face the ugly truth about my life that I was ready to check out. And the pain was so unbearable. And that doesn't excuse the shit that I did to my children or the people that I loved, but it also doesn't excuse their behavior. And my mom, she got to pass away without exposing the secrets that she took along with her. 
She never admitted to what she had done to me. My dad never admitted that he couldn't protect me. So I had nobody. And for 43 years, I have had to be a warrior instead of somebody warrioring for me. For standing up for me. And still to this day, I have the same people in my life who have been through the same things that choose to keep their mouth shut because if they say something, they might be punished or it might take something away from them. And therefore, they would rather me have to go out and do it on my own and fight my own battle instead of saying, you know what? She's telling you the truth. But that's their own karma. And I'm dealing with mine. But I have struggled and I have fought so hard to overcome the obstacles and the trauma and the turmoil. And that doesn't mean that the people in my life or my children have to forgive me. That's their own journey. I'm on mine. They're on theirs. And they have to sift through what is left of what their reality is. And our brains are trained to think about all the negative things because they're, they're so encapsulated by the negativity that they can't remember. And I couldn't remember any of the good parts of my childhood. And I still have days where I just can't. As we all do. But does it excuse my behavior from when I was younger? No. No. And the only thing that I can do is better myself. Face up to what I've done. But I refuse to continuously be beaten down for choices that I made that I have had to ultimately forgive myself for. Do I walk with my head held high? Yeah. Because I can face what I've done. I can face the reality. But what I will not face is the lies that were told about me. And I have tried to face those. But other people's words are stronger. And no matter how much I have tried to explain my side, because somebody else, it's, you know, it reminds me of these, the back in the king and queen days, that if you, you know, took, a, took you know, someone's life, but somebody, you didn't get there fast enough to tell the king, hey, I was the one who did this, and someone else came in and took took the credit, you weren't believed because it was a first come first serve basis. And if you remember when I first started talking, I told you that I got to a point where I stopped defending myself. I stopped being the first one into the, it, it, to run towards the king and say, I, I didn't do that. Or I, I did this. And so I let people believe what they wanted to about me. Because not standing up for myself at that time was so much easier for me than having to constantly hear all the negative things about myself that I just knew in my heart that I wasn't. And anybody who absolutely knew me would know that I'm just not capable of those things. We all have a shadow side. We all have a light side. And it is up to us to decide which side we want to play in, which side we want to give credit to. Did I give credit to the evil side of my past? Absolutely. But have I worked on changing my ways and becoming a better person on my journey for the past decade? Absolutely. And the only way that we can overcome the trauma and the obstacles that we have been through in our past is to face them, is to speak up. But if people continue to want to live in an illusion when you're trying to tell them, there's nothing you can do about that. You know, and I've gotten to a place now where 
you know, yes, because of what I do for a living, I do share my story with people. I absolutely do. And I'm very honest because how am I going to help others go through their experiences if I can't be honest about my own? If I can't face my own ugly truth? But am I the person that I was back then? No. Am I capable of being that person again? Yeah, we all are. We choose what we want to, what side we want to play with. And at any point in time, we can change that. I can go back to being the person I used to be. I could go back to drugs and alcohol very easily. But I choose not to. I continue to choose the footsteps to peace. And it has been an ugly fucking journey thus far. Are there good days? Yeah. Kind of few and far between, especially in the last few years, because we're really drudging up a lot of shit right now. All of us are. And it's a lone journey. And especially when you have people in your life that want to continue to take you back to the past where you don't want to entertain that person anymore because it's ugly and it sucks. But you can't control how other people see you. The only thing that you can control is how you respond and the person that you continue to become. So I have chosen not to let my past define who I am. And I have chosen to forgive my parents. And ultimately, I have chosen to forgive the people who had the truth all along and chose not to speak up on my behalf and still continue to do the same. But when it boils right down to it, the one person that I have to choose to forgive is myself, regardless of how other people feel about me. Am I sorry for the people that I hurt in the past? Absolutely. And all I can do to prove to them that I am not that same person is to continue to become me, the person I was meant to be all along that I had to go out and search for. It wasn't easy, but I like who I have found. And now they don't like who I am today. So you don't like who I was in the past and you don't like who I am today then I guess at the end of the day, you're never going to like me. I guess I'm just not a likable person. <laughs> but at least I'm honest. And I am truthful. But if you want to continue to beat me down, that's okay. But I'm going to continue to get up every single day and I'm going to continue to work on myself and be the best version that I can ever be. Regardless of your thoughts about me. So at the end of the day, this is the ugly truth about me, about what I've been through. And I'm not doing this video for fucking sympathy because I could give sh two shits about somebody sympathizing with me, th with me. I've <laughs> never had anybody do it. I don't expect it today. But what I do appreciate is the people who have come into my life and even though they know my past story, because yes, I have been 100% honest with them about my mishaps in the past and the things that I have done and the evil that surrounded me. But they have accepted me for who I am and they have helped me along my journey. So I want to send a big thank you to those of you who have supported me for the past decade and the people who have seen me and seen the ugly truth about who I used to be and who I've become. Anyway, you guys, I love you all so much. I really do hope that this has helped a lot of you. If you're going through the same thing, please reach out. I am always here to help. Um, if you have any questions or I'm just, I'm always going to be here to help others because I didn't have anybody to help me. And at the end of the day, it was the most painful journey. But that's what got me to the footsteps to peace. I love you guys all so much. I'll chat with you again soon. Take care.